couple of days ago, Nintendo confirmed that they were filing a lawsuit against Nintendo Switch emulation emulator Yuzu. That's right, kiddos. It's another episode of Joe responds to Nintendo news by responding to a Harmon Smith video. <laughs> it's gotten to the point that when Nintendo news comes out, I don't see the news. I see DMs from viewers telling me to talk about Harmon Smith talking about the news. Never say I haven't done anything for you people, that I haven't sacrificed anything. My life expectancy has dropped by like 50 years with how many Harmon Smith videos I've made. At any rate, yes, Nintendo is suing Yuzu, a popular Switch emulator. Now, why they waited until 2024 to do this is a little puzzling, because if they thought they had a case against Yuzu, surely they would have done this already. Personally, I think this is just an intimidation tactic, because I'm no legal expert, I could be off base here, but I really don't think Nintendo has an actual legal case against Yuzu. Yuzu is an emulator, it's not a piracy hub, like, it's not Vim's Lair, it's not Pirate Bay, it's an emulator. Yes, people often use pirated ROMs and ISOs on emulators, but it's not the emulator itself that caused the piracy, and there's nothing actually legally wrong about emulation. It's the same reason other emulators have had legal cases brought against them, and the legal cases have never actually led to anything, because emulation is entirely legal, and there's legal precedent for it being legal. Piracy is obviously not legal, but as I put in a tweet in response to Harmon Smith the, the other day, day, emulation is not piracy. Emulation is just the act of running the software on a device that it wasn't originally intended for. Piracy is the act of obtaining the software without paying for it. Those are two very different things. If I download Yuzu and then I run a ROM of, I don't know, Breath of the Wild on Yuzu, who are you to say that I didn't get that ROM perfectly legitimately? How, like, who are you to say I didn't burn that ROM from an actual properly bought copy of the game? You can't. That's why this lawsuit may, doesn't actually have a lot of ground to it. At least, again, I'm no legal expert. I could be wrong. But at face value, it's really hard to tell what Nintendo's actual angle here is for going after Yuzu instead of going after, like, ROM sites. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And again, you would think that if they had a case, they would have done this before. Nintendo was never able to take down the Dolphin emulator, and I seriously doubt they're going to be able to take down Yuzu. I really think this is just an intimidation tactic, because Nintendo has all the money in the world to hire big scary lawyers, while Yuzu is being put together by a handful of people in their free time, who surely don't have the means to actually see Nintendo in court the way that Nintendo is probably planning on slamming down on them. Or maybe they do, I could be wrong, but Nintendo is probably just hoping they scare the Yuzu devs into taking the software down to avoid any trouble. Because as for the actual legal case being brought against Yuzu, I really don't think it's going to hold up if it goes to court. Like, you really think Nintendo wasn't aware of Yuzu up to this point? You really think something fundamental has changed recently that now means Nintendo has a case against them where they didn't before? Like, no, of course not. I also don't see Nintendo filing suit against the other Switch emulators. They're only targeting Yuzu, which is the most popular one, and they're doing it in a very public manner. Gee, I wonder why this is happening the way that it is. But that's just the background. That's just the context. Let's get into Harmon Smith's nonsense reasons for this actually being a good thing for Nintendo to do. Let's hear this young man try to explain why Nintendo taking legal action against people preserving their games and doing work that Nintendo didn't actually want to do. Let's hear you explain why this is actually the best thing for everyone. And a lot of people threw up their hands and tried to tell you that, like, Nintendo can't do that! From a legal standpoint, yeah, it's questionable if they can do that. Like, this this would be like, I don't know. Let's say there was a very popular pirated version of a certain movie. Yeah? You, you follow? Like, a pirated version of a movie was going around. And the distributor of the movie got so upset at all of the sales they're losing and all, the, all this and that... And then, as a, as a way to combat the piracy of their movie, they started going after DVD players. I know that's boiling it down a little bit, but, like, if you want an analogy, there it is. This would be like if a movie company was trying to fight piracy 
by filing legal action against DVD players they don't like. Like, that's not actually going to fix the problem that you say is the problem. There is nothing wrong with emulation. There truly is nothing wrong with emulation. And if you disagree, just look at how much money Nintendo has been charging you for emulation. As long as you don't pirate the games, right? Like, it's just coping and seething, right? Well, genuinely, what's the problem if you don't pirate the games but you have emulators like if that's the situation you're in genuinely what's wrong with that i bought the game and then the game is mine right i bought the game disc or i bought the game cartridge what i do with the game disc or cartridge is my own business is it not if i want to burn the files onto my computer and run it through an emulator like what you gonna come fucking swat me like come swat my hands with a fly swatter Gonna come shoot me in the face with a nerf gun for that? No, it's mine. What the fuck are you on about? I've talked about this for a long time, but there's nothing legal about the current state of emulators, right? Actually, there's all it's entirely legal. There literally is legal precedent for emulators. There's not legal precedent for piracy. And it's really annoying that you keep equating the two things, and you're going to keep equating the two things. You'd equated the two things here. Like, th this tweet that, that Harmon Smith put out, this is the whole reason I wanted to do the video in the first place, because this sums up your mindset, and it sums up so many people's mindsets, and it's literally wrong. Piracy and emulation are two different things. They often coincide with each other, sure. Because a lot of times people are running emulators so they can play games that aren't in circulation anymore. They're playing games that aren't sold anymore. So how are you going to get those games if not by pirating them? And that doesn't even mean it's morally wrong or morally questionable to do that. But the act of emulation, the act of running an emulator, the act of running the game through an emulator, there is quite literally nothing legally dicey about that. There is legal precedent saying that is perfectly acceptable, which is, again, why I think it's weird that Nintendo waited until 2024 to bring this lawsuit forward, because unless they know something we don't, this is gonna get thrown out, like, immediately. Because Yuzu is not the one facilitating the piracy of their games. Again, with the, the DVD player analogy, if a bunch of movies were getting pirated and there were copies of them getting sold on the streets, the, the answer to that would not be to go sue the DVD players people are using to watch the pirated movies. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Because in order to stay on top of the new releases, they have to ask for donations. In order to uh, it, get around uh, all the additional copyright protection, they have to... They have to be on call, like, near constantly, you know? Yeah, these people are fucking angels for doing it, too. Like, I know you're a complete corporate shill, and, like, so this this may shock you, but a lot of people are perfectly willing to do things for the love of the game. A lot of people are perfectly happy to use their free time to do something just to do it. Like, they don't need the money. They don't need to, like, be 20. They don't need to make it their life. They're just doing it. And if people want to donate in, in response to that, then fantastic. But, like, this is, what, this is what always blows my mind with people who are so against emulation and they're so, like, they're rooting on Nintendo for doing this. It's like, are you not aware of the fact that you don't need to be a gigantic, multi-billion dollar corporation to make something people like? Like, has passion for gaming really just been forever associated with corporations in your brain? Updating the software, right? In order to, um... In order to, um... God, dude, you've been doing YouTube for so long and you haven't gotten any better at it! Cut your pauses! I'm begging you! You don't have to do these in one take. You don't have to do these unscripted. It makes the content so much better. I've said it a million times. As much shit as I give Harmon Smith, this dude could actually have a successful YouTube channel if he put in basic, basic editing techniques. His opinions would still be shit. His arguments would still be terrible. But if you put in, like, 5% more effort and, like, it kept everything else the same, you could honestly have a decently successful channel with how frequently you upload, but you're not going to do that. Get a hold of these games to play them on your emulators, like you're going to have to pirate them. Technically, no, you don't have to pirate them. Now, I'm not completely ignorant. I know that most people using emulators are probably pirating games, but... It's like I said before, that is not the fault of the emulator itself. If Nintendo really cares about people pirating their games, why are they going after the DVD player? 
This is all just an intimidation tactic. I truly believe that. They're hoping Yuzu folds, and they're hoping that with the lawsuit brought against Yuzu, other emulators are gonna shiver and get scared and run away. Which is why it's gonna be really awkward if this actually goes to court and Yuzu wins, which I think is a very real possibility. Right. And these are all topics that everyone's just kind of like skirting around. Like people just kind of refuse to admit it. It's why you see people like throw around terms like legal emulation, you know, implying that they buy the games, but like just don't play them on the original hardware. Right. Yeah, I, I, I do that actually. <laughs> every game like i'm not saying i burn like here's a little thing about me i guess i'm not saying i burn every gamecube disc that i own onto my computer but also i just have a i have a weird i have a little i have a thing where like i like playing games on my computer but i also like having physical collections i like the games that i'm emulating because of a nostalgic connection i have uh, to them so yeah every game that i emulate i have owned at least one proper copy of you know like all the games I all the games I have in my dolphin library are games that I either still own a physical copy of downstairs in my house or it's a game that I owned a physical copy of at one point and I just don't know where the fuck it is anymore. Like that's just me. I know I'm not everyone, but I'm also living proof that you're a fucking doofus and what you just said is wrong. Like uh they they're desperately trying to like uh fool people into thinking that emulation is some like completely uh legal white zone where there's nothing wrong with it and that they're doing everything that they're uh, they're supposed to do in order to play these games on other hardware let me just put this on the screen i keep I, I kept i kept referring to like there's legal precedent that emulation is legal this is what i'm referring to this is what we call legal precedent right it's uh, it's been nothing but a cope and nothing but a seed right the issue uh, up until now is that every single time like an emulator or a distributor gets taken down Typically what happens is that another one pops up. Yeah, so it's a little weird that Nintendo is going after Yuzu. You you and I agree on this. If the, if Nintendo really was worried about emulation and people pirating their games to play on emulators, why are they only targeting one emulator? Right. Uh, you know, it's been happening for a long time, right? But now, uh, with Yuzu getting attacked, with, uh, with Nintendo going after Yuzu... Uh, finally fi filing, filing that lawsuit, you know, emphasizing how Yuzu drives piracy, how Tears of the Kingdom was a major driving force in getting people to support Yuzu, how uh, how the company benefits from uh, from major Nintendo releases. I can see the argument, and like, I can, uh, God, I can see, I guess I can see that angle of Nintendo's argument, that like, oh, Yuzu it drove piracy. Yuzu, like, the existence of Yuzu encourages piracy. But it's not to, mm, I have an analogy. I don't know if I should make it, because I don't want to get political, and I don't want to, I don't want to divide people's political opinions here. No, you know what? Fuck it. I am going to make the analogy. If someone gets, I, I'm trying to, I'm also trying to avoid YouTube using the AI stupid word detection to slap my fucking butts with limited you know what i love is i can say the <laughs> i can say fuck i can say butts i can say youtube is fucking my butt and it's completely fine i will not get demonetized but if i say a certain list of like topically controversial words i will immediately lose monetization it is um it's so stupid so let's go with this you're walking down the street and you get pew pewed in the leg someone pew pews you someone just runs by pew pews you you know, are we on the same page here? Now, let me ask you a question. Did the pew pew hurt you or did the person hurt you? And I know this may seem like a rather rather left field analogy, but it's the, it's the most blunt I can make this. If someone pew pews you, is that the fault of the pew pew or is that the fault of the person who did it? And that's why I don't think Nintendo's argument is going to hold up. Yuzu exists, yes. But Nintendo is making the argument that people are pirating their games, and that people that pirate their games are playing on Yuzu, but Yuzu is not the source of the piracy, so what is the point of this? If Yuzu was the source of the piracy, that means if you got rid of Yuzu, Switch piracy would go away, right? No, another emulator would pop up, or people would just go to a different emulator. This is all just an intimidation tactic. It's all it is. Stop being so dense. Emulation is legal, piracy is not. They are two different things, and Nintendo knows this. That's why they haven't brought a legal case against Yuzu before now. How uh, how desperate people are in like shilling Yuzu online, right? Like, uh, 
it, it's becoming more and more apparent to uh, in the legal side of things that the current state of emulators, you know, this idea that you can just play everything that Nintendo releases on PC is not sustainable, right? What do you mean it's not sustainable? There's no profit margins. There's no like, there's no like target, like revenue goals. It's just people doing things for the sake of doing them. What, like, what do you mean it's not sustainable? What's being sustained? What's at risk of being not sustained? Like, it's in in the sense that you're thinking about business. It literally is not a business. It isn't rooted in reality at all. There's all these. There are all these legal issues involved with uh, getting Nintendo games on the PC. There's really not a lot of legal issues. I either burn the disc or the cartridge onto my computer, or I download a ROM or an ISO from a website. Which, like, yeah, maybe there's some legal gray area there. But again, it's not like Nintendo's going after those places, interestingly enough. To the point where, like, anybody who knows anything about the process, anybody who knows anything about it, like, they are well aware that what they're doing is illegal. And I think in a, to a certain extent that uh, people like Mudahar, you know, who are coming out and, like, crying about this, they know that too, right? They know it's over. Just because something is illegal doesn't mean it's morally incorrect. I think we can agree. I think we can all agree with that statement. Just because some there's a just because there's a law about something doesn't mean that, that it's it's morally correct. And to put this simply, if Nintendo is refusing to continue selling certain games of older platforms, that like this is why this is a big deal. This is why this needs to be nipped in the bud right away. And this is why I absolutely support Yuzu going to court and just bla and just laying the smack down on Nintendo because this needs to this needs to be shut down right away. If Nintendo refuses to preserve their games, to make their games backwards compatible, to continue selling their games, to if they if they keep just shutting down their old digital marketplaces that gets rid of all their other games, that means those games basically just disappear. Because once all the physical copies of those games are no longer accessible or, you know, either because they're not working anymore or because they're, they're, they're just gone, they're destroyed, they're broken, they are price gouged. That means those games, those pieces of art are just gone. That's why this is a big deal. That's why emulation is a big deal. And that's why people like emulation, because not only is it properly preserving games that Nintendo has no interest in preserving, Nintendo has no interest in making money off of these games anymore. Nintendo has no, has no interest in supporting these games anymore. So why the fuck is Nintendo putting money towards ensuring that no one can ever support or enjoy those games ever. It is such a bad look. It is such a corporate way to look at things. Now, I do understand why Yuzu specifically may be pissing Nintendo off more than usual, because Yuzu is a Switch emulator playing Switch games while Switch games are actively coming out. I can see why Nintendo is getting pissy about Yuzu specifically, but that said, Yuzu is not actually doing anything legally wrong. The people pirating Switch games are the ones doing something actually legally wrong. But as I've said a million times, Nintendo's not going after them. Nintendo is trying to make an example of Yuzu instead, because Nintendo doesn't like emulation at all. They want to take the biggest, most like obvious example of emulation, which would be Yuzu, and basically just flog them out in the town square and discourage everyone from doing it. They want to establish some kind of legal precedent with the most public example possible, and that is going to obviously have a trickle-down effect on every other emulator. That's why they're doing this. They're trying to take Yuzu and use Yuzu as a way to get rid of emulation altogether, because if Yuzu is found in court to be like actually legally in the wrong just by existing, that legal precedent I've been referring to in the past is going to be overwritten. And that means now every emulator is at risk of being taken down just because a publisher raises a stink. Even if that publisher has no interest in supporting the games that are being emulated, even if that publisher has no interest in actually making money off of the games that they're supposedly losing sales on with the emulators, that's the thing that always that, that's the thing that always makes me laugh. People are like, oh, you're stealing money from the company by emulating PS2 games. Oh, you're stealing money from Nintendo by emulating GameCube games. No, I am not. 
These are not lost sales. These are sales that Nintendo refuses to make. And if Nintendo refuses to make the sales, I literally am not hurting anyone by preserving the game on my computer and playing it on my computer. No one is hurt by me emulating things that are out of production. Again, I, I understand why Yuzu specifically is a bit of a different case because the Switch is still out. The Switch is still selling. The Switch is still having new games being released for it. But we all know Nintendo's attitude towards emulation. We all know a lot of big publishers' attitude towards emulation. And if Yuzu is taken down here, that precedent can now easily be applied industry-wide to every emulator. And that is a very dangerous thing to happen. Like, that is a gaming industry that no one in their right mind actually wants because that just gives corporations even more control over what we can have, over what we can't have, over how far our rights as consumers actually go. And that's what I mean when I say just because it is illegal doesn't mean it is morally incorrect. Just because it is technically illegal for me to pirate an N64 game, there is nothing morally wrong with it because I am hurting no one. In fact, I am doing I'm doing the opposite of hurting people because I am preserving and playing and enjoying this piece of art that the corporations who own the right to the piece of art have thrown in the trash. God, you are mm. I don't even know how long the video is. I'm only three <laughs> I'm three minutes and seven seconds into his video, and I've been recording for over 25 minutes. This was, uh, hmm. I think I understand why people like listening to me respond to Harmon Smith, actually, because this, I imagine this is a much more entertaining way to get the news than just the news. Right. Um, once Yuzu is taken out, and I think it's safe to say that they will be taken out. That will open the floodgates to uh, Nintendo taking down other patrons, right? Exactly. That's why this is dangerous. That is precisely why this is dangerous. Other Patreons that that exist to uh, to take money from PC gamers who want to play Nintendo games, right? I you you don't. Oh my god, donations are not a requirement. That that like if 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 I choose to hand you ten bucks. That doesn't mean that you and I are now in business together. I just handed you 10 bucks because I appreciate the thing that you did. You know, you didn't charge me. I handed you money on my, of my own free will. That's different. Uh, that is going to open the floodgates to that. And once that happens, uh, it's going to be more and more difficult for these people to get away with what they do. And why are you happy about that? Like, you shouldn't be happy about that. It's going to be harder to get away with something that hurts absolutely no one. And again, again, as, as, as much as I can understand Nintendo being pissy about Yuzu specifically with the Switch coming out, new Switch is coming out, that whole spiel I went on. You, it's not like Yuzu stole sales from, from Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. If you bought a Switch for the Switch games, you bought the Switch games on your Switch. I think it's safe to say that the vast, vast majority, if not all, of the people who play Tears of the Kingdom on Yuzu were people who were either never going to buy a Switch in the first place, or they're people who did buy a Switch and Tears of the Kingdom and also wanted to try it on PC. Like, I'm failing to see how Yuzu is actually stealing business from Nintendo, you know? Like, how many people, and this is impossible to prove, but the fact that it's impossible to prove may actually help Yuzu in court now that I'm thinking about it, because it just proves how flimsy Nintendo's case actually is. Like, if Nintendo is trying to prove the point that Yuzu is stealing business from the Switch, that the existence of Yuzu is, like, somehow unfairly stealing business from the Switch, they would have to prove that people bought a Switch, but then bought Tears of the Kingdom on Yuzu. Or they would have to prove that someone would have bought a Switch if not for Yuzu. And that is impossible to prove. And like they're and like they're really going to hold this over over the court's head. This idea that like, oh, Yuzu's like oh, oh, oh over a million people played Tears of the Kingdom on Yuzu. Okay. How many of those people pirated the game? How many of those people actually bought the game? How many of those people also bought a Switch? How many of those people are Nintendo customers? And how many of those people aren't? You can't prove these things. You literally cannot prove these things. Right. And uh, going forward, you won't be able to accept money, right? <laughs> going forward, there's going to be severe issues 
in in doing what you've been doing for the past couple of years right yeah that's also a legal precedent i don't think should be set like hey i'm doing this thing out of hobby out of the kindness of my own heart but if you want to throw me a few shekels you can for the court to come down and be like no you can't do that like that are you fucking kidding me you're fucking are you fucking kidding me this could be just the ron swanson and me talking now but if if a fucking court comes down and says no you cannot give money of your own free will to this person doing something for free you cannot show your appreciation with five bucks if a court comes down and says you literally cannot legally do that anymore oh my fucking god the free market is fucking doomed because what you're doing is illegal. No, it is not. Emulation is not illegal. If emulation was illegal, there wouldn't be 5 million emulators all the time, everywhere, for every platform. Emulation is legal. Piracy is not. Stop equating these things like Nintendo is trying to equate these things. The second these two things get legally equated, the industry is going to catch on fucking fire. The issue, I think, is that... It hasn't really been demonstrated just uh, the current modern uh, like how modern how the modern pirate scene pirating scene uh, pirating scene affects uh, t -t 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 today junior actual hardware right actual performance sales because a big cope for these people is that like oh we don't we don't affect hardware sales. We don't affect anything. Oh. Yeah, no, that's true. If I download Dolphin, like, like the, the GameCube is not in production anymore. If I download Dolphin, I didn't impact your hardware sales. I was never going to buy a Switch. If I download Yuzu, I'm not impacting your hardware sales. I was not a sale that you were ever going to get. And again, this is why I don't think Nintendo actually has a case. Because you cannot prove that you that if I download Yuzu, that I'm like a stolen sale from Nintendo. I was never going to be a sale of Nintendo. I have no interest in the Switch. I am never going to buy a Switch. And if and on the off chance that I somehow do buy a Switch in the future, I'm buying it used at a discount, which is again, not impacting Nintendo's hardware sales. You genuinely, truly cannot prove the things that you want to be proven. They literally cannot be objectively proven in a court of law. If uh, Nintendo wanted to sell more hardware, they should just make better hardware. Yeah, it, yeah, yes, yes. This is why this is dangerous. This is why this is dangerous. <laughs> if, can you can you believe people think that if they if they want to buy Nintendo hardware they should just make better hardware? Oh, that's crazy! That's crazy! How you're mocking people for asking a company to impress them more with their product before they give money for the product. You're just saying this. You're just saying this. I just unironically. You're unironically mocking people for wanting a better, more impressive product before they give money to it. Like, buddy. That's how this is supposed to work. That's how an open market works. What you are proposing is a complete corporatist monopoly over everything, and you don't even notice it. What you are proposing is for any kind of competition, official or not, to just not exist, because eh, imagine trying to, imagine wanting a better product before you give money. Are you fucking, like, are, are you alive? Are you alive? Like, uh, it, again, it's just a cope and a seed, right? God, I've been recording for 35 minutes. I don't even, like, and there's there wasn't much dead air in this. I don't know how long the video is at this point. There's usually some dead air. Dead air. Dead air. But I'm like, I, I, this, this is going to be a long-ass video, and I'm exhausted. I usually, I usually, if I'm expecting a video to be this long, I usually script it, but I didn't script anything this time. I scripted, I scripted my opening spiel, my opening little bit there about the lawsuit. I scripted that bit and the rest of this has been, has been completely off the cuff. I, I never do these, I never do these things unscripted or at least not, at least not with the help of Mr. Weed. God, I am, I'm tapping out of this one. Ugh, Nintendo, you suck. Nintendo, you, you just, you fucking blow. Seriously, I respect the shit out of Nintendo for being so dedicated to gameplay first and fun first when it comes to like what they put money into. As I have, I have a video coming out in a couple days about just the state of the AAA industry, and I want to make clear that despite how much I fucking cannot stand 
Nintendo's business side. I think their development side and their software side and just their design philosophies are the best in the fucking industry. We need more companies like Nintendo who don't give a shit if their graphics aren't the prettiest. They just want their games to be fun. But oh my god, it amazes me that a company so dedicated to fun and gameplay first is also so vehemently against that fun being preserved. It's astonishing to me and it drives me nuts. It drives me peanuts and walnuts and almonds. <sighs> Fuck Nintendo. Okay, toodles.